Now, CNN's Anderson Cooper on assignment for 60 Minutes. For years, educators have tried and failed to get poor kids from the inner city to do just as well in school as kids from America's more affluent suburbs. Black kids still routinely score well below white kids on national standardized tests. But a man named Jeffrey Canada may have figured out a way to close that racial achievement gap. What he's doing has been called one of the most ambitious social experiments to alleviate poverty of our lifetime. His laboratory is a 97-block neighborhood in Harlem, which he's flooded with a wide array of social, medical, and educational services available for free to the 10,000 children who live there. It's called the Harlem Children's Zone. Ed Bradley first reported on Jeffrey Canada three and a half years ago, but back then there was no way to tell if his children's zone was working. Today, however, results are in, and they're nothing short of stunning, so much so that the White House is now taking notice. For Jeffrey Canada, however, it's just a start. You grow up in America and you're told from day one, this is the land of opportunity, that everybody has an equal chance to make it in this country. And then you look at places like Harlem and you say that is absolutely a lie. So you're trying to level the playing field between kids here in Harlem and what, middle class kids in a suburb? Th that's exactly what we think we have to do. Uh, you know, if you grow up in a community uh, where uh, your schools are inferior, where the sounds of gunshots are a common thing, uh, where you spend your time and energy not thinking about algebra or geometry, but about how not to get beat up or not to get shot or not to get raped. When you grow up like that, uh, you don't have the same opportunity as other children growing up. And we're trying to change those odds. He's trying to change those odds on a scale never before attempted. His goal, to break the cycle of poverty in an entire neighborhood by making sure all the kids who live there go to college. That's what it's all about. You really believe that's possible to break I that absolutely cycle? absolutely know we're going to do it. Canada remembers well what it was like to be a kid in the inner city. We couldn't afford... He grew up not far from Harlem in another tough New York neighborhood, the South Bronx. Abandoned by his father, he and his three brothers were raised by their mother, who was barely able to get by. When I first found out that Superman wasn't real, I was about maybe eight, and I was talking to my mother about it, and she was like, no, 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 there's no Superman. And I started crying. And the chaos, the violence, the danger, no hero was coming. Canada got lucky, however. As a teenager, his grandparents moved to the suburbs, and he went with them. He got into Bowdoin College and then the Harvard School of Education. Good morning, boys and girls. He's been working with kids in Harlem virtually ever since. Uh, you know, one of the first things kids ask me when they really get to know me, they say, Mr. Canada, uh, so yes, are you rich? And I say, yeah, I am. And they're so excited because they think, I finally know somebody who has power. What they really want to ask is, is there any way that you can help me figure out how to, to get a nice car and maybe get a house? And I think they want someone to say, yes, you can. I got out, you can get out. Uh, there's a way, and, and I'm going to help you do that. To do it, Jeffrey Canada decided to build his own school in the Harlem Children's Zone. Right now, there are some 1,200 kids enrolled from kindergarten to the 10th grade. It'll eventually expand all the way through the 12th grade. We've created a school to help you all become the smartest boys and girls in the country. It's a charter school, so Canada is able to run it his way, free from the bureaucracy and restrictions of the public school system. There's one adult for every six students. Classes are smaller and school days longer. Kids come in on Saturdays and summer vacation that only lasts three weeks. We will always ask permission before leaving the group. Yeah. Okay. Discipline is strict, and so is the dress code. To teach kids healthy eating habits, there are cooking classes using ingredients from the school's own organic garden. And if any of the kids get sick, this on-site clinic provides free medical, mental health, and even dental care. Canada calls his school the Promise Academy, and this is what he tells parents at the start of each year. We promise our families if your children are with us, we guarantee they're going to get into college and we're going to stick with them through college, right? So that's, that's a promise. How can you, though, actually promise that they will go to college? Uh, if my kids don't go to college, people who work for me are losing their jobs. Uh, and there's just no way around that. You'll fire the teachers. I will, I will fire the teachers. 
I'll fire the, the, the after school workers. I'll fire the directors. Everybody understands that this thing uh, is our job as the adult. And we're not going to hold the kids responsible, right? And, and are, are some of my kids belligerent? Yes. Do some of them come in and don't try hard? Yes, they do. Uh, do they come from broken homes? Yes. Is there poverty and drugs and crime? Yes, it's all those things. Those kids are still going to college. My That's name right. is Rashar Nozier. Rashar Nozier wasn't too sure about college when Ed Bradley first met him back in 2005. He was just in kindergarten. You want to go to college? Much as it kills me, yes. Much as it kills you. Why was it, would it kill you going to college? Yeah, because they got because they got um people words that I don't know. But you'll learn new words every year. Trust me, you'll be okay. Okay. Today, Rishar is in the fifth grade and seems a lot more confident about college. Do you know what college you want to go to? Stanford. What do you want to do after Stanford? I would like to um, earn my way to being a CEO. Why do you want to be the CEO? To tell you the truth, I think you get paid better when you're CEO. I think you're right. If you work hard... You to make sure his kids succeed, work. Jeffrey Canada will do just about anything. Who in this group went to Disney World this summer? For younger students who oh. ace their statewide tests, there are free trips. And he pays high schoolers up to $120 a month if they get near perfect attendance and grades. Aren't you kind of basically bribing them? I love to bribe kids. <laughs> you, you love know? to bribe kids? I love kids? to bribe this is... Look, I was going to say, well, Jeff... Don't you want kids to do it for the intrinsic value of it? Sure, I'd love them to do it for the intrinsic value. And until then, I'd love them to do it for money. <laughs> I don't care. I just want them to do it. Yeah, no excuses. Tuition at the Promise Academy is free, but there's not enough room for all the kids who live in the zone. So admission is by lottery. So let me tell you how this lottery is going to go. This August, we watched as anxious parents waited to hear if their children would get in. Drew. Roberts. There were 210 slots open for a new kindergarten class, but 375 kids had applied. Kyla Phipps, Philip Panty IV, Isabel. As the slots filled up, some parents left waiting began to realize their child's chances of success in life had just been reduced. These are three-year-old children, and their brain is just starting to develop. There were a lot of angry parents. They, they were angry. Uh, and they were accusing me, Jeff, how could you do this to a three-year-old? This is not right, Jeff. And I was saying, no, no, you're right, it's not right. I was sitting here yes. for nothing. But you look into those mother's eyes and those father's eyes, and you see the fear and the terror and the clear understanding uh, that this system is designed so that their kids are probably not going to make it uh, if they don't get in. Who else? To help ensure that the kids who don't get in still make it to college, Canada has created a pipeline of free programs targeting all 10,000 children in the zone. He sends recruiters out door to door, trying to sell sometimes suspicious families on what services he's offering. Do you have a moment? No. Canada's pipeline begins at birth at the Baby College, a nine-week workshop that teaches new mothers and fathers how to parent. You know, you're hitting. And then, you know, after that, you come and hug the child. It's sending mixed messages. It also teaches them how to prepare their kids for elementary school. So you have the routine of reading books. For toddlers, there are free pre-kindergarten classes that focus on developing language skills, even in French and Spanish. Canada has also put reading labs in public elementary schools in the zone and created an SAT tutoring center for teens. You have to run it up to this one. Ninety percent of the zone's public high school students who participate in Canada's after-school programs now go on to college. We get them in the pipeline, we seal it. Once they get in, we don't let you out. You get out with a college degree. That's the point. None of this comes cheap, however. The Children's Zone annual budget is $76 million two-thirds of which comes from the private sector, and much of that from Wall Street. It comes to about $5,000 per child per year. 5000 per kid, that's, it's a lot of money. Yeah, it's a lot of money uh, until you see what it costs us when we fail these kids. Uh, in New York City jail, $60,000 a year. 60. Juvenile detention, 100000 plus a year. We're spending the money on these kids, and we're not getting anything in return. <laughs> Canada's long argued that investing in the Harlem Children's Zone would show a return. And now, for the first time, there's scientific data to prove it. He has done a remarkable job. 
Dr. Roland Fryer is a professor in the economics department at Harvard. He's conducted the first independent statistical study of Jeffrey Canada's efforts to close the racial achievement gap in his school. What is the racial achievement gap? Black children in our schools are not performing at even close the rate as white children in our schools. So the average black 17-year-old reads at the proficiency level of the average white 13-year-old. Four-year difference in effective reading skills, that's, that's huge. But when Dr. Fryer analyzed four years worth of Promise Academy test scores, he discovered something remarkable. At the elementary school level, he closed the achievement gap in both subjects, math and reading. Actually uh, eliminating the gap absolutely. in elementary school. Uh, we never, say, we never say anything like that. Absolutely eliminating the gap. The gap is gone, and that is absolutely incredible. Last year, according to New York State data, 100% of Canada's third graders scored at or above grade level in math. Good job. Narrowly outperforming their white peers in the city's public schools. 96? Is that the answer? Yes. Even more impressive, Canada's impact on middle schoolers, kids who enrolled in the Promise Academy in the sixth grade. They started out far behind grade level, but Dr. Fryer found that within three years they had virtually eliminated the achievement gap in math and reduced it by nearly half in reading. These are kids that a lot of people had given up on, and uh, he showed that it's never too late. Does it change the way you look at the problem? <laughs> it does, because here's an analogy. We're 10 touchdowns down in the fourth quarter. We kick a field goal and everyone celebrates, right? <laughs> That's kind of useless. We're still 67 points still down, okay? We're not just losing, we're getting crushed, all right? What Jeff Canada has shown is that we can actually win the game. Jeffrey Canada may be winning, but he's nowhere near declaring victory. Reversing the black-white achievement gap and then closing it in elementary school, that's, that's huge. It, it's, it's about an hour's worth of celebration huge. Uh, you know, I've got kids who might be shot tomorrow. We've still got a lot of work to do before I can feel comfortable uh, that they're all going to be okay. According to Canada, four kids in the children's zone were shot to death this past year. Four others were wounded. Yeah, there, there's been an uptick in violence? Yeah, there's been, there's been an uptick in violence. And the economic crisis has hit Canada hard as well. Donations are down and he's laid off staff. His endowment also lost $4 million to Bernie Madoff. And that money's just gone. We basically have written that money off. It's basically gone. But Canada's experiment did receive a boost earlier this year when President Obama announced plans to create 20 promised neighborhoods across the country modeled after the Harlem Children's Zone. If the Harlem's Children's Zone can turn around neighborhoods in New York, then why not Detroit or San Antonio or Los Angeles? and a lot of students came to school on Saturday. There are other charter schools getting similar positive results, but replicating the Harlem Children's Zone in its entirety may be difficult, in part because it's hard to determine exactly which ingredient is the key to Jeffrey Canada's success. I feel like I've gone to a phenomenal French restaurant. The dish tastes good, but I'm not sure exactly what they did to do it. He, he's doing so many different things. Yeah. He's got this all hands on deck approach. He does, he does, he does. And I think the, the, the key step forward from here is that we need to kind of demystify this success. I want to boil him down to pill form so we can transport him to other places. Because if folks think, well, this is just Jeff Canada, or this is just Harlem, and this is just a special deal, they're less likely to adopt it in Omaha and places like Minnesota. And we're going to stick with them through college, right? So how will you measure success? How will you know when the Children's Zone has worked? When I see my kids by the thousands, with degrees, wow. uh, I will say this is what we set out to do, and we've done it. We've got our kids in the best schools in America. They're going to be successful. They'll be competing with everybody else all over the country. People will be looking for kids from Harlem, saying, oh, those kids are so great from Harlem. We need more kids from Harlem to come in. Then we'll be successful.